You have tuned in to Authors Up here on ALH Broadcasting, an affiliate of the Streaming Inspirational Broadcast Network. Your hosts are authors Ruth Griffin, Andrea L. Hines, and yours truly, Victoria Henderson Poole. We love what we do, and we know it is every author's desire to get their work to a greater audience. Authors Up is a forum for authors by authors, those who are already published and those who want to be, along with other writers and playwrights. Here, we provide an opportunity for their work to be showcased as we share our own, gain tips and tools, information and insight to not only enhance the writing process, but be able to just enjoy the journey. Those who are willing to put pen to paper will usually have a story they are willing to tell, and they are invited to tell it right here. And if you are not a writer yet, no worries. We want you to be a part of our listening audience. So take notes if you like, send in your questions, or just feel free to comment on the candid conversation because it's time for Authors Up. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Authors Up. You have tuned in right here to ALH Broadcasting. We're an affiliate of the Streaming Inspirational Broadcast Network, and we are so happy that you have joined us tonight. I tell you what, we have a a wonderful guest who is going to be with us, and she's going to be sharing her book and sharing her story. And I tell you, it, it is one that you really, really don't want to miss. So we're glad that you're here, but we want you to share this with someone else so that they will be able to enjoy it as much as you are going to. So you know how we get started. I like to be able to say hello to our uh, my co-host so that they can say hello to you and we're going to combine some things tonight because we want to get to our guests very quickly mm-hmm. so uh, I have welcomed you and I just wanted to tell you we always do a little recap of our week and I am just grateful 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 I had a wonderful week uh, we're going to be doing some different things here at Authors Up at the formatting of our program my co host didn't know I was going to say that tonight, but I Uh-oh. did. And, uh, <laughs> it's all we're right. Going to have, have more details on that going forward. Um, I've been doing a lot of writing in the past week. I'm glad about that. Been keeping up with my steps and my water. So I, I oh, thank gosh, uh, Victoria good. for that. So when I say it's been a good week, it has been a really, really good week. So uh, how about you, Ruth? You want to welcome our listeners and tell them what's been going on with you? Oh, absolutely. But before we do that, you you left out a certain part Uh, to your week in review that you got your book done. Yes, I did. I finished my (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. I did. Yeah, I was going to say, well, you deserve more than that. So, yes, yes, that, that was awesome. So we, we, we get to start on the editing part now, which is incredible. Yes, yes. And, and All I, right. I, what amazed me, I thought, when I, was, when I was finishing it up, Ruth, and I thought, I just don't have enough words here and all of that. And I went, I Googled and checked, you know, and said, you know, short, short story, you know, fiction or what. And they were saying 20, between 20 and 30,000 words. Um, and, and what I turned into you was over 22,000. Mm-hmm. And I was amazed. Mm-hmm. And that was because yep. of the writing challenge that, that you all made me participate in. <laughs> awesome. I can't, so I still can't wait to read it. Make you do things, <laughs> listen to them. Listen to them. The outcome will be amazing. It will be amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So yes, I did get that done. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now I can say my hellos. Everybody, welcome to our show. We are so glad to have you. Uh, let's see. What did I do this week? 
I actually wore makeup this week. I know that doesn't sound like anything, oh, but I haven't worn what? makeup in a year. <laughs> that so. is a big deal for you. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's just, you know, and, and the funny part was that as I was doing it the second day, I realized, you know what? I'm not going back to the old normal, but mm-hmm. things are going back to some kind of normal. So okay. that was pretty cool. So good we, we are on good a good path. Um, my daughter visited for a few days. Um, she can't. You, I loved having her here, but we didn't realize how messy she was until she came back. So okay, <laughs> she okay. Me, so she won't hear that part, but. <laughs> yes. um, but it was a good visit otherwise. And it's, it's, it's been a great week. So no complaints here. Just enjoying good. life. So what about you, Victoria? Well, hello, everyone. And, and as always, we're glad to have you. Um, let's see. My week has been, um, it's been interesting. I've been working on my um, journal, too, and it's just about finished, so I'll be sliding that Yay. to you soon, Ruth. I'm really excited All about right. it. All right. I'm really excited. That's awesome. <laughs> and just enjoying the glow of having a college graduate. And and I, too, oh, had my, my middle baby, and we hope they don't listen to the show. I, too, had my middle baby home with her um, <laughs> cat and dog. And you know what? You're glad to see him come, and you're glad to see him go. <laughs> well, yes, ma'am. Oh. I yep. love my babies, but mm, mm, just it's just too much. But um, but that's about it for me. I, you know, it's, God has just been good, and I am really excited about our guest tonight. So let's switch gears and get right to it. I'm going to read the bio. All right, our guest tonight is Linda S. Plunkett, Ph.D., who wrote the book entitled Supernatural Rescue: From Broken to Beautiful. It's a book about the before, during, and after surrounding the brain surgery she underwent after being diagnosed in 2012 with a brain tumor the size of a tennis ball. Licensed under the National Christian Counselors Counselors Association, our guest previously ran the nonprofit Hope for the Hurting, ministering as a counselor, teacher, and speaker. Originally from Ohio, she and her husband, Jim, live in Florida and have three grown children. She is a clinical, biblical psychologist and an ordained minister. Amazingly, she did competitive ballroom dancing to the point where a dance was choreographed to depict her story, and when she finished, that routine was given an award by two individuals, one of which was from the TV show, So You Think You Can Dance. She has considered writing a second book, either detailing her battle with fibromyalgia, which came eight months after the brain surgery, or to help readers provide support for people around someone who is going through crisis or a devastating illness. She has spoken publicly about her experience both with struggling to have people alongside her during her diagnosis and recovery and having a major medical institution tell her there's nothing more we can do for you when she felt her recovery wasn't progressing. Listeners, you know what to do, so it's time to send us some hearts and help us welcome our guest guest for the evening, Linda S. Plunkett, PhD. Welcome, Linda. Welcome, welcome. Yay. <laughs> We're glad to have you here, Linda. Thank you so much. I, I feel thrilled to be invited to be on your show. Oh. <laughs> well, we are going to jump right in. I have to say, I read your book in one evening. and. Wow. um <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I said as I was reading it, because you just jumped right into the story, you know, and I appreciated that because I was immediately drawn in and I had to just keep reading about it, you know. So why don't you tell us about your, uh, tell us about your story, tell us about your book. Well, before I do that, I want to congratulate you ladies. It sounds like you're already writing and journaling, and I just note, had I not journaled, this book probably would not 
happened. My brain was so messed up after the brain surgery. But a very intelligent person told me to make notes and to write down what I was going through. In the very mm-hmm. beginning, mm-hmm. my was up. I could not even read my own notes. I couldn't read my own handwriting. But as time progressed wow. then, um, the story and the notes eventually became the book. But it was very surreal because I had a counseling practice, everything was, you know, there were ups and downs in life, but other than that, God was good and things were going well. And then to get a diagnosis, you have a brain mm. tumor and you're going to get surgery. I was in shock because really mm. I had stopped having no symptoms and mm-hmm. and just never dreamed um, after being health, you know, a healthy person at that point, 59-year-old person, that I would ever have anything like a brain tumor. So it was wow. very like you know psychologist, but if I could have been in denial, I would have been in denial. I didn't want to believe it was happening. Um, it just didn't mm-hmm. seem, you know, like it. There just didn't seem to be any good reason for it. And I think many things we go through in life at the time we're thinking, why? Why is this happening? Why me? Why God? But, you know. God is so faithful. He always has a plan. And although we don't realize at the, the time we're going through this that, there, that, that there, is, there is a meaning, there is a plan. We don't know that until later. It yeah. can really kind of get stuck and say, you know, why and why me? And I know I asked my husband, what did I do? Did I do something wrong? I felt I was being punished for a long time because uh-huh. the brain you know, very difficult recovery, very slow, and then I developed the fibromyalgia, um, which I had mm-hmm. pain all over my sleep. And this was after going through a near-death experience where I felt God was faithful and he did rescue me. It still, for a long time, didn't seem like it made any sense. It was very difficult. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But, well, mm-hmm. I, you know, no, please go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to go on. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit about your surgery. Um, I had never heard of what you went, you uh, what you had gone through, and I actually stopped reading the book at that point and just got up and I went and just read the whole passage to my daughter. And I'm going to read just a brief of it because I think that, and I'm giving a trigger warning here, um, but I think you know understanding the severity of it you know, yeah. speaks to the miraculous, you yeah. know, that yeah. you are here with us today. So in your book you say, um, so your doctor explained that he would need to perform a type of surgery known as a craniotonomy, which involved essentially cutting ear to ear across the top of my head, peeling down my face, and then stretching my face back into place and re-sewing the dura lining, which is the outer of three layers of membrane that protect the brain. He explained that he would not need to shave my head, but would use a bacteria-killing germicide around the area of the incision. You went on to say on how you felt numb as uh, he was explaining that to you, but, I mean, I, honestly, just reading that, I was struck by just how miraculous this whole thing was. You know, number one, the doctors that they were able to perform that, but that God was able to keep you through that. Yeah. And it was just, wow, was all I could say. So, hmm. um, many people, you know, I, why don't you talk to us? Go ahead. Yes, many people did not survive that type of surgery. And also, um, you know, when I woke up, uh, I had intense pain, but mm-hmm. I felt like that was extremely devastating, the fact that I couldn't walk. Mm-hmm. I couldn't think. Right. I had trouble hating. And like I said, for a long time, it didn't make a lot of sense, and I really didn't understand why. You know, why and why me and why? Why Why am I going through this? And even questioning yeah. God, just like, God, why am I alive? Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, 
<laughs> I honestly, I mean, I like I said, I read your book in one evening, and it was just that really powerful because those are the answers that you do. You know, that you do. Those are the questions that you answer in the book. Um, mm-hmm. Let Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about your writing journey because at one point, you you know, you mentioned that you started journaling. Um, in your healing process, and then that you were going to write the book. Is that something that you were doing before or that came after um, the surgery? Now, I had a, a home health care person who came to the house when I was really in the worst of the worst situation. You know, I couldn't walk yet. Uh, I, you know, I couldn't even go up the stairs to sleep in my own bed. I was sleeping on the couch and falling mm-hmm. a lot to the bathroom and back banging up my body and um, just I was not doing well at all and the therapist recommended that I journal because he said I know how difficult it is for you but as you journal and you write things down you'll later on you'll be able to understand your progress and how things Mm. are changing better and so Mm -hmm. that's what really beginning of the book and like I said in the beginning I couldn't really even what I wrote down, but fortunately that didn't last long. And you know, the notes began to be readable. And um, and of course, my husband, you know, he gave me feedback, which was very, very important. Um, wow. And I just I grasped a bit um, when I went through the, the the rescue where I felt I was dying, and I literally felt what I felt was the hand of God come out and pull me back into my body. Um, mm-hmm. And this is end of the book if you read to the very end but my husband was upstairs and he literally saw the hand of God that rescued me and so crazy that really happened you had a brain surgery but when my husband said he saw angels around me and he saw the rescue the hand that rescued me that gave me the confirmation that it was real and it happened Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My goodness! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Do you so? Do you continue to journal? I do. I do continue to journal, and um, in the world that we live in right now, I feel there's different types of journaling. There's so much, you know, negativity in this past year that I try to journal. What is God doing in my life? What do I have to be thankful for? How mm-hmm. is He moving? positive otherwise you know I've known so many people that they seem to have anxiety or depression or they're sad you know because of the events of this past year which we really couldn't control but Mm -hmm. it's important to matter what God still has a plan he's still faithful and we still have many blessings to be thankful for and we don't Mm -hmm. want to forget activity that he's given us right in the midst of fact, yes, there's negativity. You turn on the news, there's a lot of negativity. We don't want to forget the positive work that God does in our lives. It's so important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to hand you over to um, Andrea. Got some questions? Well, first of all, I just I want to say that very seldom am I speechless. Um, I'll start there. (laughs) But Linda, in so many places, um, that's where I've been with your story uh, because I just, it is difficult to imagine uh, that you have gone through what you've gone through and have come out with this um, positive attitude and this Mm -hmm. story that is just going to um, touch so many people on so many levels. Uh, So while I I usually have a lot of questions, or quite a few, I might say, not a lot maybe, um, but I really only have one question for you. Um, I've known only one other person who has had brain surgery. Uh, and it was a young man, and actually he was in his teenage years. And I can't remember what his um, uh, issue was, but it's it's like the 
the wiring in his brain was just all tangled and all twisted, and and it was a very delicate surgery that they had to perform on him. Um, And he has had some issues and some challenges since then. And I wanted to ask you tonight, what what do you think has been the biggest change for you uh, since the surgery, not counting the fibromyalgia, if you can separate that, but, but between the time you had surgery and now, what do you think has been the biggest change for you? Well, I guess, you know, I could answer that in a lot of different ways. From a physical sense, um, I don't have a sense of smell anymore, and no, I do not have COVID. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> by that, people, you know, I had, and unfortunately, they had to take the nerve with which I smell. And so, um, I do have some difficulties with balance from time to time, which is one of the reasons I still do ballroom dancing because it helps me. Um, with my um, coordination, it helps me with my balance. It's actually very good for me to remain physically active, as active as I can be. Um, and that's a big change. Uh, and I wouldn't say I was a couch potato, but I'm more physically active. I try to walk. Even if I don't do anything else, I try to walk, do something active, even if it's just walking around the block once a day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, Go through something like this, the change, you know, like I said, this was a long struggle, and the fibromyalgia was worse in some ways to the point I said, God, why am I even here? You know, why am I alive? And asked, you know, and cried out to God to the point that that night he sent me an angel to my bedroom to comfort me. Like, why am I alive? Why am I I still felt so useless months afterwards? I mean, of course I wasn't useless, but, you know, when you, you've had a busy counseling practice and you've helped people and, you know, you, you can't go to work, you know, I mean, that's, that's a huge change. But mm-hmm. um, I do think that I look at things quite differently than what I used to. Like I said, I, um, I never dreamed that going through this could make me feel people's pain even more. Um, mm-hmm. But, this many people talk to me and they understand i i spoke for i think it was about 400 ladies in orlando who were cancer survivors and several of them said to me linda we have never gone through anything like you've gone through but honestly when i'm around people that are very ill and unfortunately i recently lost a friend to cancer a close friend Mm -hmm. she understood that i felt her pain because i felt pain on so many different levels and so God has changed me, um, and I knew there was a reason, you know, but when I was going through it, I, I couldn't understand, but now I really believe, having gone through all that, I have the capability to touch and communicate with people on a much deeper level because of the pain, and, mm-hmm. you know, if I, what I wrote on the back cover, I remember reading the back cover, and I thought, you know, the part that talks about you know, that I'm grateful that I went through it. And, you know, but for a long time, I obviously I wasn't grateful. But having gone through it and seen God's healing and seeing his, you know, the possibilities, like when a medical institution says there's nothing we can do for you, you have a choice oh. at that point. Either give up, sit in your wheelchair and say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm nothing, I'm never going to see anything negative. Or you can say, you know what, I think there's got to be a better plan. And for me, it's mm-hmm. like, why be alive if God wasn't going to use me in some way? And mm-hmm. so even when I thought, if it's such one person, it's worth it. You know, whatever I do, whatever I encounter, he leads me to. Now he's, um, he's led me to a coaching website where I can coach on the Internet. I don't have a counseling practice anymore, but I feel if I touch one person in that process, it's all been worthwhile. So my thinking, you know, he's physically, but I think he has made me into a more positive person. And, you know, I understand how people have been upset with COVID and and the ramifications of COVID, but after going through brain surgery, uh, you know, I 
I now feel like my life is in God's hands. So I'm not going mm-hmm. anywhere my time. And I think we have to realize we all have a plan, which is God's plan for us. And I really do believe um, if we look at ourselves and we analyze our gifts and we analyze what he's given us and how we can touch other people, it's a whole new purpose in our lives. And and you ladies mm-hmm. as writers I know that that to be true. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> then the beautiful, beautifully spoken, beautifully said, and um, I just, I, your courage in going through what you have been through and then coming out on the other side with a determination uh, to help others, um, whatever their their struggle or journey has been with pain or loss or whatever, I I. I don't have a word for it. As writers, we ought to have words for everything. I, just don't <laughs> have, I don't have words for it. And I am just uh, grateful uh, that you are with us tonight to share, to share your story. And um, I'm going to let uh, Victoria take it from here because I know she has some very uh, specific things to ask you about. And I just thank you so, so much uh, for being with us and for for writing the book, for writing the mm-hmm. book. Thank you so much. Victoria? <laughs> hey, Linda, how are you? <laughs> I... um. I wanted to just say, first of all, you know, there is God does not make any mistakes, and he is so timely, you know. Um, there's two things that happen this month that go right along with your book, and it is Mental Health Awareness Month as well as um, Fibromyalgia Awareness Month. And um, I happen to have um, fibromyalgia, too. And when I read that you had it, I was like, oh, wow, i got a fellow fibromyalgia warrior. So can you talk a little bit about your journey with fibromyalgia? And we don't want to tell too much of the story because we want our listeners to get the book. But can you talk about it a little bit? Fibromyalgia, not every doctor agrees about fibromyalgia. And I had several doctors say, no, you don't have that. You have something else. But nobody really Mm. could find anything else. And they say the people that believe in fibromyalgia and, um, you know, believe in the diagnosis say it comes from a trauma to your brain um, or to mm. your head. And obviously I had almost an eight-hour brain surgery, which is enough for any person to experience a trauma to their brain. But this actually right. um, started about eight months after my surgery. And ironically, I was starting to feel a little better. And then mm-hmm. I woke up one day, I had pain all over my body, and I couldn't sleep anymore, and it was an absolute nightmare. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And initially, oh. um, I think at the end of the book, I was on a particular medication, but I'm sorry to say that that did not work for me long term, and I had to find a different solution. But um, oh, wow. when it's to the point you can't sleep, and it changes you, you start to feel, you know, and I can't speak for everyone, but I know I felt bad about myself because I felt, you know, you don't sleep. It changes who you are. You're not the same person, and you're not always nice to everybody, and I felt very guilty, although the pain was (laughs) And when you don't sleep, it makes it so much worse. It does. It really does. Um, You know, I, I, I have had it for a number of years myself and um I you know I still haven't found any relief you know and and it's it's crazy did you do you did you have any um what they call fibromyalgia fog and like I will go to say something and know what I want to say but it comes out something different did you, did oh, you have yeah. that and when you don't sleep when you don't sleep it causes all kinds of problems with your brain right exactly exactly right you know, and I just want our listeners to know, you know, um, I, you know, I had I struggled with being tired, you know, and and you know, you slept all night. Why are you tired? And then I, I will get exhausted for um, what seems to be no reason, and it just comes well, out of left field. I mean, are you are you still yeah. struggling with it now? 
Um, not really. Um, my Good. and I say I say my cure. I have ninety percent of my fibromyalgia was healed because of another treatment that was not supposed to have anything to do with fibromyalgia. Oh, so my that goodness. was a miracle in itself. That was a miracle Amen. in itself. All right. I love that. You know, we, we hear it authors up, you know, we, we have the bad story, but I love to hear the positive um, sides of it and how, how people got through and hear the victory. And, and as, as far as my, fibromyalgia, what would you tell um, our listeners to, to do if they know somebody has fibromyalgia? What is, is one or two things that you would advise? Okay, what I did was probably more radical than most people, but I suffered for quite a while, and I thought, mm-hmm. you know, I can't live like this. I felt so bad. I I did change my exercise. I did okay. change my diet. I even changed the supplements that I took, and certain mm-hmm. things that I knew that I discovered were bad for me, I, I didn't need it anymore. You know, I uh, made substitutions mm-hmm. that were healthy substitutions, substitutions but two after the brain surgery I weighed um I was somewhere in the range of 50 pounds overweight which was like 25 percent mm-hmm. um, more than the usual weight that I carried and um I, I I don't know they put me on steroids for a long time and I don't know mm-hmm. if the steroids you know I don't know if they had effect as, as far as an effect on the fibromyalgia but I mm-hmm. definitely changed my lifestyle as far as how I live my life, even my daily schedule, my the, the schedule I would try to, you know, have for, for rising in the morning, for going to bed, but the diet and the exercise. So I did some very radical things, and um, I think they help to a point. Um, okay. You know, it, there's so many things that can cause pain, and for me, um, one of the biggest culprits was sugar, and so – I gave up a mm. lot of my sugar, and I replaced it with natural things like honey or stevia. But um, yes. I did not. I tried to stay away from things that were cancer causing. Or there's so many artificial sweeteners. I won't name names, but they're just really not good for you. <laughs> um, yes. the same thing, you know, with food additives, hormones, things that are added to our food that can really not be good for you. You know, if you know what they are, then you know you know what I'm talking about. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, um, it's, it's funny that you say that because I have also embarked upon um, a new eating plan. You know, I've stopped eating meat and um, doing a whole whole foods, plant-based diet. And I must say, I've been feeling a little better. So I, I'm going to keep it up because I've lost about 10 yes. or 12 pounds. And um, it, it has really made a difference. It's really made a difference. And I have Good to, I think I have you. to beef up, beef up. Thank you. I have to beef up my um, walking and my exercise, but I, I'm on the right path. And I'm just, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. Well, well I um, think what happens, yeah, what happens a lot. But no, people, go ahead. I just wanted to mention, and if other people have fibromyalgia, they may understand, but when you have pain, you don't want to exercise. But I will right. tell you, if you do it in spite of the pain, you definitely won't feel worse and you may feel better. How about that? You know, my motto is, well, if I'm a hurt, I'm a hurt for a reason. How about that? That's good. That's very good. <laughs> well, how, well, how are you doing overall now? You know, how, how are things going with you now? Things overall are good now. Um you know, at my age, okay, this happened, the brain surgery at 59, you know, the fibromyalgia mm-hmm. until about 2015, 2016, around that time. Um, I do have ramifications from the surgery that, unfortunately, mm-hmm. I don't know that I will ever overcome, except I know in heaven it will right. be different. But um, I've lost a lot of long-term memory. In fact, three years mm-hmm. before the brain surgery, I don't re- even remember my son's wedding. Isn't that sad? But oh, wow. um, I lost three years of permanent long-term memory. But okay. what seems to happen now that I can't really control is between, I would say, six months and a year, the memory just goes. And it, okay. I'm trying to take more pictures and review the photographs. Sometimes that helps. But, you know, in life, we can either feel bad about something we can't control or else, there again, we can count our blessings, what we do have. I'm still able to dance. You know, I'm still able to minister yes. and speak to other people. 
I'm still able to give of myself to make other people's lives better in spite of what I've been going through or in spite Amen. of what I'm going through right now. And when people say, oh, Linda, do you remember this or that? You know, sometimes I just kind of shake my head or sometimes I don't say anything. I don't want them to feel bad that I didn't remember it, but I can't control that. That is out of my control. And so it's important to realize what can you control and what you can't control and to pick your battles because some battles we really can't fight. Like my sense of smell, I believe in heaven I'm going to be able to smell. But, you know, you know, for now, I just have to say it is what it is. One day I'll smell the roses again. I can't wait. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I love your attitude, and, and I hope our listeners are, are taking that in. The, the, the story is just beautiful. I love it. And, you know, for brokenness to celebration. And you, you really sound like a person who is just taking life as it is and, and celebrating with that, and that is just wonderful. Well, um. Uh, I'm going to ask you, do you have anything that you is on your heart that you want to tell our listeners before we wrap up? Well, I guess, you know, seeing we've gone through a really tough year is I want to challenge people. I know, I know it's been difficult for a lot of people. A lot of people are still fearful. There's some anxiety. There's some depression. But mm-hmm. just have hope. What you're going through does not have to be permanent. And put your faith in God and allow God to help you. Um, There's a verse in Scripture, and it's in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It talks about God's power being perfected in our weakness. And, you know, I've had to do that over and over and over again. Say, God, I'm weak. I don't know if I can do this. I feel I can't. But if we rely on God and his strength, we will get through it. So, I would just encourage people, don't give up. Don't give up. Um, Have courage, but also realize if you don't have courage, God will give you courage. He will give you strength to move forward, but you have to keep your eyes fixed on him. Amen. Amen. Well, would you tell our listeners where they can get the book and how they could get in touch with you? Okay. Well, um, the book – And I haven't checked. I'm not sure if it's still at Barnes & Noble, but I know that it was, and you can definitely go on Amazon. Um, Mm -hmm. still available on Amazon. Um, I have a website, um, and I have have my Supernatural Rescue page, which is on Facebook. But Linda S. Plunkett, um, Linda S. Plunkett, um, if you Google that, Linda, Linda S. Plunkett, on the Internet, you'll come up with um, a place that shows actually um, the, the dance that I, where I was awarded the award uh, for inspiring and encouraging other people. But it also has information about the book. It has information about my coaching, um, how to get information regarding that. So um, that's probably the best place, the best place to go to. And um, um, I'm trying to think if there, I normally don't give out my personal phone number, um, but right, however, if you, make, right. if you make contact with me, I promise I will contact you. Also, I can give you my email, um, mm-hmm. which is Hope for Hurting, Hope, H-O-P-E-F-O-R-H-U-R-T-I-N-G at AOL.com. And that's another way to reach me. So, um, okay. Okay. Well, while and while you were talking, you know, I went ahead and, and, and looked you up, and you are so beautiful, and I see all your information. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait to just plug into your page. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank were you going to say something thank else? Um, were you going to say something else? Go ahead. No, I think I think that's pretty much, I think that pretty much answers your question, and okay. I am available. Um, most of my speaking has been on shows such as this, but... I have started to do live speaking again, and I'm oh, more good. than happy to travel. If people wish a live, you know, a live speaker, um, I'd love mm-hmm. to have that face-to-face contact with people. Um, I love talking to you ladies, but I'd love to see faces too. So um, yes. just keep that in mind. If, if, your, if your organization or your church needs a speaker, I would love to come and speak. All right. Um, that, we would, you know, we would love it if we ever had the opportunity, definitely. Because, you know, I know you have much more to say than what we could say in our short time. And thank you so much. We appreciate you being here with us. 
Um, we're going to uh, turn over to Ruth right now. Ruth usually gives a tip at the end of the show. So what do you have for us today, Ruth? Okay, so we're going to talk about research tonight. So um, just a few quick tips on, you know, ensuring that, you know, you want to, you're writing a book, you ensure, you know, whether it's nonfiction or, you know, it's a fictional book, whatever the genre, you want to ensure that you're writing the most authentic novel possible. So how do you approach the research process? Um, first and foremost, establish a system to organize and store your research because, you know, you, you can't just go from website to website. You know, you can bookmark them. You can um, create a file, save PDFs. Just find the thing that works for you. Um, Pinterest is a great place, especially if you're doing, um, you know, using photographs. I uh, follow this author whose books were set in the 1800s, and she found the most authentic photographs and stuff, and she would just put them on Pinterest for all her followers to see. So that is a great form of doing that. Um, you can delve into other forms of media. You know, obviously you can read a lot of books, read articles, um, things like that. The Internet is great for that. But you can also look at documentaries. YouTube is a great source for information. It is also a black hole. So just remember that because you may be there for a while. Um, Talk to people, especially if you're doing any kind of biography or anything like that. You know, people are a great source for that, um, for research. Um, it could also provide you the inspiration when it comes to characters. Meeting and chatting with new people is a great way to just come up, you know, inspire character tra traits or quirks in your own fiction. Um, and lastly, I would say that, you know, don't get stuck on the research and forget to start writing. So, um, you know, the research is great. It's interesting, especially if you're, you know, you love history, you know, like I do. But at some point, you're going to have to transition over to the actual writing and incorporate what you've researched into it. So um, those are just a few quick tips for uh, researching when you write. But there you go. Right. Awesome, awesome. You always have great tips for us, Ruth, and we surely do appreciate that. And do you have mm -hmm. any closing remarks uh, for us tonight? I just want to thank our listeners for hanging with us. Um, you guys are great. Um, if you ever want to drop us a line, you know an author who might want to be on the show, if you have suggestions for the show, so you can email us at authorsup at gmail.com. All right. And, Victoria, I know you've got something to say. Yes, I want our listeners to get the book. Uh, Linda's book <laughs> is just beautiful. you got to get the book, get the book. And I'm, I'm already connected on our Facebook page, and I, and I know that you will um, enjoy the story. And once again, we thank Linda for being here. And I thank you guys, too, for hanging with us. And um, my bronze girls, I didn't call you bronze girls tonight. So thank you for being here, bronze girls. I always love spending time with you. <laughs> and we love spending, spending time, time with you. you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, that is it for us for tonight. Folks, you know what to do. you got to send up some hearts for Linda so that she knows how much we appreciate her yes. being on with us and sharing her story. And, Linda, I tell you what, you left me with some nuggets. You left me with we have a choice. We can feel bad or we can count our blessings. Amen. And we need to know what we can control and what we Amen. can't control. And last but not least, put your faith in God and don't Amen. give up. Thank you so, so much. And thank you, listeners, for being with us tonight. And you know we will be right back here next Sunday at 7 p.m. Until then, this is Andrea Hines with Victoria Henderson Poole and Ruth Griffin. And there's never a dull moment here at Authors Up. Up.